Hello there, it's Sandeep, and in this video we're going to go over an amazing bullet game played between two 2400s on leeches. And this game is interesting because black decides to make 12 knight moves in the opening. The vast majority of them were knight a6, followed by knight ba, followed by knight a6, followed by knight ba, knight a6, knight ba, knight a6, knight ba, on and on this went until white self-destructed and lost, which is what we would expect to happen. And so the game begins, e4, knight f6, the alakine defense, very sophisticated, we have e5, in this position, the knight normally makes this type of maneuver, but we had knight g8. We have d4, knight c6, c4, knight b8, knight c3, knight a6, bishop d3, knight b8, knight e2, knight a6, castles, knight b8, bishop to e3, knight a6, a6, knight b8, rook c1. You want to pause the video and work out what black played next. Well done if you did. It is, of course, the move knight a6. And now we have b4, very alpha zero like grabbing lots of space here on the queen side. We have knight b8, f4. And if you actually study this position on chessable, the main line is knight a6, but instead black goes with the move e6. Okay, an interesting sideline now, even though Stockfish gives an evaluation of plus a gazillion. So we have d5 threatening to break open the position. We have knight to e7, knight e4, g6, g4, the first real wrinkle here from white, a completely unnecessary pawn move. Surely you should be breaking open the position and checkmating your opponent. Now we have h5, f5, h takes g4. Black has some potential counterplay down this h file. We have f6, the first real mistake from white. Surely in this position, f takes g6 is just too strong. We have knight to f5. This knight is too strong. It's removed. Knight takes f5, g takes f5, knight to b5, a6, knight d4. That knight reroutes. We have c5 b takes c5 bishop takes c5 and because you do all your tactics puzzles you know exactly the move that white can play here uh, to win a pawn it is of course the move knight takes f5 this bishop is hanging if you decide to take the bishop on e3 then of course the knight is going to recapture instead white beginning to lose his mind by this point plays the move knight takes e6 which is of course a complete blunder we have bishop takes e3, check a free piece. We have king h1, d takes e6, never mind the rook, let's create a protected pass pawn. We have d6, bishop d7, and in this position white does what all of us would do, which is to play bishop e4, hang it. We have f takes e4, never mind the rook, queen b3, bishop c5, rook e1, e3. This isolated pawn is completely surrounded, but it still has to be removed. So we have rook takes e3, and I think in this position you get the feeling that maybe black is run by a secret GM, uh, because most of us would take this rook here on e3. However, there is a much stronger move. It is bishop c6 check. White is going to lose a rook anyway. We have king g1, queen b6. What's the hurry in taking the rook? The rook is totally pinned. Went up material, tried to get queens off the board. We have queen takes b6, bishop takes b6, and it was in this position that white resigned. And if you have a look at the clock time here, white has only 19 seconds on the clock, whereas black has almost 34 seconds, almost double the time. And it's because white spent an eternity developing, trying to figure out what the best move is, whilst black was just playing knight a6, knight b8, knight a6, knight b8, knight a6, knight b8. And of course, white self-destructed and lost. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that game. Happy Monday. Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't watch too many videos about how to get better at chess. To get better at chess is life's work. Keep it entertaining. Keep it fun. Keep going. Good luck and Godspeed.